You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. How we doing? How we doing? Well, it's a beautiful day, except uh, Cheryl Swoops uh, decided to ruin that. And you've been looking at her as she's speaking about, uh, you know, Angel Reese and, uh, you know, just down in Caitlin Clark, down in Clayton Clark, down in Caitlin Clark. And at the end of the day, you know what? Uh, as a member of the media, you reach a point, you finally say, okay, enough's enough. Okay, and what I'm, what I'm telling to you now with Cheryl Swoops, enough is enough. Okay, and, and here's the deal. Um, you always hear me say the old regime, and here, here's what you got, folks. You got the old regime. They, they went through it. They did it. They built it. They handled it, right? They didn't make any money. They didn't have success. Okay, so now you got them trying to sabotage the league and do everything they can. Okay, and I'm telling you, they're batting a 1,000. Okay, if you put them in the batter's box in Major League Baseball, they're batting a 1,000 of everything they can do to destroy the game. Okay, and we're going to a different level. We're going to go a little bit uncut. We're going to tease you a little bit with the uncut. But they're doing everything they can do to sabotage the game. Okay, there's nothing that they can do now uh, that's going to bring it back and not sabotage the game. And understand what I mean, folks, by sabotage the game. They're doing everything they can so the WNBA is not successful. Not successful. Okay, first of all, number one thing, it's not their money. That's number one. Okay, they don't have a vested interest in the league. Okay, they're not an owner. Okay, they're not uh, doing the marketing and advertisement of the league, and they're not doing uh, right off the bat. And when you get right to it, I'll, I'll cut through the chase. I mean, here, here's what they're not doing. Uh, they're not doing um, the Caitlin Clark. They are not a fan of Caitlin Clark. Okay, they're just not. And unfortunately... That's the way the game goes. I mean, Clark's just Clark, okay? And you can't, you can't change Caitlin Clark, all right? And you can't change the fans' opinion. But you get Cheryl Swoops in there, and man, oh, man, it's Cheryl Swoops, and you get there to the WNBA, and you look at Don Staley, and you look at all the former players of the WNBA. They are not interested in the WNBA being successful. They are really are saying, look, if we're going to leave this game, we want to leave it in the worst shape that we can. They don't care about attendance. They don't care about fans. They don't care what the public opinion thinks. They care about themselves. Cheryl Soups cares about herself, okay? And she's got she's got enough situation going on where, you know, you're promoting Angel Reese and you're promoting Angel Reese. Let me, let me clear the air on Angel Reese, okay? Angel Reese is an entertainer. She's not a full-time basketball player. Caitlin Clark's a full-time basketball player. Any point in time, Angel Reese wants to step into the arena and play full-time basketball. Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark be the two best players in the league, hands down. But Angel Reese is not a full-time basketball player. Angel Reese is not thinking basketball 24-7. That's why Angel Reese went over to Paris. Come on, guys. If you're fully dedicated to the game of basketball, okay, you stay home, you get your rest, you work on your game, and you come back to play the second half of the season. Okay, but I'm not doubting Angel Reese because I totally believe Angel Reese can have a better future in acting, uh, in modeling, uh, in actually being a public servant. That Angel Reese has got is God gifted, been chosen, and has a calling for that. But you're not going to sit up here with Cheryl Swoops and sit up in front of one, myself, and start talking about the WNBA and what's going on and how the fans and everybody is doing it. And it's an embarrassment. It's a sabotage of the league, okay? They don't want the WNBA to be successful because they weren't successful, okay? They were successful in playing the game, but now the game's all about marketing. It's all about being successful. It's always putting, as they would say, putting fans in the seats. And here, here, here's the deal that really got me. Here's what really got me when you got the Team USA, okay? You're talking about a global game and global, global, growing the global game. You get to Team USA, and here's the deal. You got the lowest attendance of anybody participating. Folks, Spain and China do 27,000. Nigeria and Australia, 24,000. Germany, Belgium, 20,000. France, Canada, and you get all the way down here to server Puerto Rico, and then there's Team USA. Okay, this is when you make blunders. This is when you make mistakes. This is when you start speaking, and you start not doing what the fans want. This, the, and, and as you hear me continuously, you hear me bring stories to you, I do it for the fans, okay? And for the new WNBA, okay, that's what it is. It's the new WNBA is fantastic. 
And I, I'll put it right back to Cheryl Swoop, okay? Because at the end of the day, you know what? Cheryl Swoops is a great, was a great basketball player, okay? There's no doubt about it. Cheryl Swoops was a great basketball player, but here's what I got on Cheryl Swoops. If Cheryl Swoops played, played today, I mean right now today, Cheryl Swoops wouldn't be that great a basketball player. Cheryl Swoops would be MVP of the league, okay? You got you to catch this, folks. Cheryl Swoops played basketball in a time, in an era, that, yes, it was good. But the game is advanced. It's like Michael Jordan. If Michael Jordan played today, everybody talks about getting 50. No, he won't. The players are better. They're jumping higher. They're more skilled. The players that Cheryl Swoops played against were not skilled players. Let's, let's, let's end that argument right now. Let's take that uncut. She was more advanced than the players play. If you put her in the league today, Cheryl Swoops would be an average player. Average. Average at best. Okay, because there's too many other players that do the same thing Cheryl Swoops did. And when it comes to the game of basketball, knowing the game of basketball, let's go to it. Oh, God, folks, you got Cheryl Swoops is coming in here, coach that Loyola. Okay, so let's go look at it and let's see. Okay, 2013, 2014, Cheryl Swoops went 11 and 21. Okay, 34% winning percentage. Okay, 2014, 15, okay, Cheryl Swoops went 26 and 25. Okay, that's about a 19% winning percentage. 2015, okay, they've seen enough. They've seen enough, okay? And she went 14 and 16, and it came back that the report on Cheryl Swoops was she was too hard on her players. Okay, so let me get this right. You weren't successful as a coach, but now you're trying to coach America and tell her how great the players are and everything we're doing. That's false, folks. That's false flagging. That's just going out there trying to say something. And, and here's the deal I'm talking about. Because it's corporate enterprise business with me, and I, and you know what, I don't, I don't care how great you are, okay, because you could be the best actor in the world, but if nobody watches your movie, okay, if you're not getting anybody to watch the movie, what difference does it make? And, that, and that's what we're about. So let's look at the average attendance, okay, because we're talking about the old NBA and we're talking about the new NBA. The new NBA is going to be far greater superior than anybody else, and they will have far greater superior players than all the players that played in the in the WNBA in the prior years. Why? Because the game is advanced, okay? You got you got people who would normally be post players when Cheryl Swoops played. That's all they did was sit in the post. They're running the guard spot now, okay? But let's get to it. Let's stay on track. What do we got? We got average attendance from WNBA 2023. Okay, let's look at it. Aces average 95. You got the Phoenix Murphy 91. Seattle Storm, okay, 89. You got the Lynx, 77. I don't know how the Liberty and the Lynx. I mean, somebody missed a dudge. I don't know how you could do exactly the same number, but that's what they got it at. Okay, all sevens. Okay, you got Chicago Sky. You got the L.A. Sparks. You got the Connecticut Sun, Dallas Wings, Washington Mystic, and then you got the Indiana Fever and Atlantic Dream. Now, here's the deal. You got Indiana Fever sitting on the bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel, folks. And when you get in the corporate enterprise business, it's about making money. Okay, when you get into Wall Street and you get investors coming in, it's about making money. It doesn't matter how good you are. They want to see the results and did you reach the target. Now, so you look at that there and you say, okay, that's where we were in 2023. Well, why don't we advance it and see what's going on this year in the new WNBA. That's the new WNBA. And I'm going to say it a third time. The new WNBA. You look at it, you got the Indiana Fever sitting here, okay, leading the pack, okay? And these are behind a little bit, so don't worry about it. It's, it's more advanced. You got the New York Liberty bouncing in there, playing good basketball. Their fans love them, okay? They love them. You got the Aces, okay? You got the Sparks. They love them in L.A. You got Seattle. They love them in Seattle. You got Phoenix, okay? And you go right down the links, averaging what you're doing, right? So you got that where it is today. And when I take a look and I start showing you the numbers, Okay, you look at this as the list they had before. Okay, you can see that list and where the teams were ranked and how it was coming out. And now you look at the list now, okay, and you got a completely different list. And what am I saying here, folks? Goodness gracious. I mean, you got the WNBA, the old players that played in the league. And I, and I give them all credit, but they wouldn't have been that great today. Okay, they would have had to been better basketball players to play in the WNBA today. And that's what the WNBA has. Now, you can sit around here and you get on ESPN and you list, list all the fake news and Cheryl Swoops can get in there and say all the things she say. The bottom line is the players are better than you, Cheryl Swoops, and they're better by a country mile, okay? They're shooting threes. They're doing passes. They're doing everything the game can do. Now, am I, am I Caitlin Clark? Am I over oversaturated with Caitlin Clark? No. And let me tell you why. I believe in corporate enterprise business and you do what you got to do to make the game the best game it could be. Okay, just like the NFL, I always will give you that comparison because you don't do 
NFL players don't come out and start spatting about, hey, we play in a different era. Yeah, Jim Brown. Cheryl Swoops is like Jim Brown, okay? Late, great Jim Brown, who was a well-represented, supported the culture, supported the community, was active as far as gang violence, things of that nature, okay? Jim Brown played in an era where Jim Brown was bigger than everybody else. He was the biggest. He was a running back, but he was the biggest. Cheryl Smoots played in an era where she was bigger and better than everybody else. Okay, that's it. You match her up in the day's game, Cheryl Swoops is an average basketball player, period. Okay, and I know everybody can go in uproar and tell me I'm wrong and do whatever you want to do because at the end of the day, you got to put it on the mark. And when you're talking about 20, 30 years ago, man, come on. The women are three times as skilled. I mean, come on. This is embarrassing to me that we could sit here and really talk about the presence of somebody who is actually saying it. And you look at what goes on with the U.S. Olympic team reacting to Clark's sign. That's right. You're reacting. You know why you're reacting to it? Because at the end of the day, this is what you got. You got the fans are speaking to you. You got Jap Japan, okay? And there's a ton of money in Japan. There's a ton of money in all countries, really. But there's a ton of money in Japan. What that message is saying, Japan wants to watch Caitlin Clark. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are, and I don't care what you do, okay? When you sabotage the league, when you sit back and leave her off a of Team USA like it's all about you, you know what? That means, you know what? Get, 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 get rid of the name. Get rid of the WNBA. And just call it the WBA. Call it the new Women's Basketball Association because that's what it is. Whatever they did in the past, that's history. That's history. That's over with. That's done. Okay? Now you got to move forward to the new regime, and the people are speaking. Here's what's embarrassing. You don't want to acknowledge the people are speaking, but the people are speaking so loudly that you have the lowest attendance. The lowest attendance. That's an embarrassment here. And here's where you get you, you, you embarrass the United States of America. That's number one. Okay. We're, you got to understand we are the home of the brave and the land of the free. We are the land of the free and the home of the brave. We take second class to nobody, but we go over there as second class citizens. That's what you did. We went over there as second class citizens from the United States and you got all the globe is watching. You got a chance to do something that's never been done in the history of the NBA or the history of the WNBA. Is that have a global market latch on and carry you through the second half of the season? But here's the deal. Everybody wants the money. Everybody wants to get the money, but they do not want to follow protocol. Okay, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you are, and I don't care what you've done. When it comes right down to the flat out, of either you're good for the game or you're bad for the game, and that's the way I love the NFL. And you always hear me speak about the highest shields, the highest brand. And why? Because if you're not good for the game, they will clip you out of the game. They will work you out and they will keep you out. It would be an embarrassment if Joe Montana, okay, Peyton Manning, okay, look at this. This is what I'm saying. Tom Brady got on there and start talking about, hey, this player and that player, because it doesn't lift the game. These guys are ambassadors for the game. Eric Dickerson, he's an ambassador for the game. It's time for the old regime to be ambassadors for the game. And if you don't want to be ambassadors, change the name. Get a new name in here. And the fans at this point, we're so tired of it. We're tired of it. We're tired of it. We went through this the entire first half of the season. Okay. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I love Kathy Uggleberg, but Kathy, let's be honest. Okay. You're talking about, well, first we off, it's a, it's a competitive league. The files are too hard. The other day I hear, we, okay, we're doing the word, the white bee. I mean, we're just going on and on and on. And while you guys are going on and on and on, money's falling out your pocket. Okay, and if you want to be a pro player, okay, and here's, here's, what, here's the deal. You play for money. Okay, that's why you play the game to get paid because you're good at what to do. Caitlin Clark plays the game for money. And that happens to be a player who loves the game. Okay, she's not, she didn't come here asking for this. Okay, she didn't walk through the door, say, look at me. She came to be an active participant, a willing supporter of the WNBA. Now the WNBA has just said, we're going to shut her out, this, that, and the other, and every time we bring up what she does good, there's some other player. And this turnover thing, man, kiss it goodbye. <clears throat> I mean, guys, come on. Let's kiss it goodbye. Here's the deal. You get 18 turnovers, and you got a 3-to-1 ratio. A 3-to-1 ratio means you got six turnovers. So Caitlin Clark, the numbers says she can do, she's getting so high numbers, of course, her turnovers are going to be higher. Heck, if anybody steps on the court, let's keep it uncut and unreal. You try to you try to fit 30 passes in the tight windows. 
That's what NFL quarterbacks do. Okay, the difference between college and the NBA or college and the NFL is they, they make it work through tight windows. That's what she's trying to do. Does she have all the players? No, no, no. Can this team come back and just annihilate the WNA, which it will, because I know what's going to happen. You got so many people who don't take the stance. You got you, and not everybody. You got a lot of players in the WNBA just want to play basketball. You got a lot of players in the WNBA who would love to come play with Caitlin Clark and just take the league to another level. Now, when Juju, Paige, Kiki get here, we're going to go higher. This is new game, new era, new day. Half the players in the WNBA have never played in front of a, so, a sellout crowd. Okay, think about that. You never played in front of a sellout crowd. Okay, but guess what? They're selling out in the NCAA hand over fist. Okay. You got North Carolina State up there going to Final Four. They're coming back, and they're doing their thing. And they got a couple more guards that can come in the NBA. And I'm going to tell you something. They're better than the guards in the NBA at North Carolina State. There ain't no doubt about it. Okay, so let's quit all this. And Cheryl Swoops, you know what? Let me be honest. Okay, you're sitting there on Gilbert Arenas' show. But let me be honest with you. You ain't no Gilbert Arenas, okay? You ain't no Gilbert Arenas, and you couldn't fill it up like Gilbert, and you couldn't pay like Gilbert. The men give you the respect because you were a competitor and you were willing to step into the game. But please understand, if Cheryl Swoops played today, she'd be an average player. Okay, all of them would be average. One, they're too small. That's the, that's the first thing. The guards in the, in the WNBA will be six-footers, okay, which means you're going to get post players pretty soon. They're going to be 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", and they're going to be out there like Brianna Stewart, okay? So if she had to match up and play defense, okay, what Gerald Swoops was able to do was just play offense, not defense, okay? And that's why you, you're looking at it, but that's where all the hate And when I get players, former players, okay, if you can't support the league, then either stop talking about the league because all you're doing is creating controversy. Okay, you're creating drama. And that's what Cheryl Swoops is all about. Some people like drama so much, they got to say something that the attention forms on them. And the WNBA, hire Cheryl Swoops in some capacity. Give her a job, because that's what she wants. Give her a job in the WNBA and put her in administration and put her looking at the numbers. Okay, because at the end of the day, this is all about numbers. And I don't care how great a player you are. I don't care if you're black, white, green, yellow, orange, or purple. Okay, it comes down to the numbers and are you being successful. And you cannot, you cannot spit on your investors. Every time Cheryl Swoops make a statement, she's spitting on the investors. Okay, when the U.S. Olympic team made the statement, black girls rock, you're spitting on the investors. You're going to retire. You're going to be done. Okay, your, your, your whole WNBA career was successful, but the game has changed. Okay, Coach Reeve. It's not that way. And Coach Reeve, you are not Coach K. Okay, let's be out. You're not Greg Popovich, okay, and you're not Steve Kerr. And these are the men who have coached the Olympic game, okay? They have never, ever disrespected the game of basketball. And that's what, you know, you talk about the between the men and the women. Let's talk about it. And the men, they play. They're trying to get there. They understand the amount of money they're playing for. And the women, it's more about what you say and how it does. They don't care about money, so they might as well have some of these players play for zero Okay, because that's what you're asking them to do. But when you get right down to it, folks, this is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We are powered up by fanatics, and we have reached a point of no return. Okay, and what I mean by no return, here, here, here is basically what I'm just saying to you. You walk down the numbers, the attendance of last year and the attendance this year. Okay, what's changed Caitlin Clark has? I don't care if she can dribble, pass, or does 100 turnovers a game. The bottom line is the fans are coming to watch her and want to see more, okay? You cut that. You cut that because you felt that you had power, okay? And here it is. You got, it. You got the Japanese who love basketball because it's not just about America loving basketball. It's a global game. You got the – and, and, and folks, salute to the Japanese basketball team, the U.S. Olympic Japanese basketball team. Let me tell you what I mean by the U.S. Olympic Japanese basketball team game. Okay, and how they went in there and how they played the game. Yeah, you guys had all the size, but you weren't better players. You just had more size. And sooner or later, I will tell you this, Japan is going to get more size and they're going to compete because they they were really quick and fast and playing the game basketball. And if you look at it, they really played Caitlin Clark type of basketball. They moved the ball, they passed, they do what they got to do. Okay, so you got that and you got it right there, sitting there right there for you. But here's the deal. 
you can't have you can't have adversity going back and forth in the league. And unless you're doing something, here's the Indiana Fever leading the board. What's important? You want to get investors? You got to show them a proven track record. Yeah, you have to show them a proven track record that you're getting the job done. And if you can't show them a a proven track record, and folks, let's take it to corporate enterprise business, okay, and venture capitalists. When venture capitalists look at your business plan, they look at your idea, they want to know how they're going to get their money back. That's what they want to know first. Am I going to get my money back? Okay, when you get Cheryl Swips and the old regime and everything they're doing, they don't give a damn where the investors get the money back or not because they're not going to be here. Okay, that, that, that's why they're acting that way. If they still had 20 years careers in the, in the WNBA, they would have a different tone. But because it didn't happen in their lifetime, they're more stuck on the work they did than the growth of the game. I repeat, the old regime is more stuck. Okay, when, in a game of basketball, when your ball gets stuck, that means nobody wants to pass the ball. Okay, the old regime don't want to pass the ball. They need to pass that ball forward and let the WNBA triple up the 36 teams, triple up the 80 games, and get the women what they deserve. But don't sit here and be a gatekeeper. Okay, you talk about they want to be a gatekeeper for Caitlin Clark. Okay, Cheryl Swoops wants to be a gatekeeper for Caitlin Clark. And Caitlin Clark is the best guard. Okay, I'm not going to say the best guard to ever play in the NBA, but in the current era is the best guard and the best fit and the best model, okay, for the game today. Now, what do the people want to see today? They want to see a Clayton Clark model. What does that mean? They want to see more players come in. They don't care if they're red, green, orange, black, yellow, okay? They want to see more players come in the game, okay, with the image and likeness of Caitlin Clark, and they're there. Paige Buker's coming out of Connecticut's coming, okay? No doubt, Juju Watkins, man, she's coming, okay? And when these players come to the WNBA, they're not like the old regime. These guys have played in front of national fans. Here's the deal. And let me break this down. We're going to close. Here's the deal. They played in front of national fans. They make more money than you, period, 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 okay? Caitlin Clark makes more money than Cheryl Swoops made in her entire WNBA career. Okay, let's be honest. Caitlin Clark will make five times as much money than Don, than all the old you grieve. I don't care if you're Witherspoon coaching. I don't care who you are. Okay, the money is what counts, okay, and that's why you play the game, and the only way you know you can make money if the fans are willing to pay for it, okay? Would the fans be willing to pay for Cheryl Soups to play when she played? No, they weren't. Did they change that? No, they didn't. So why are you going to come out here and be a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper, a gatekeeper, okay, for the WNBA? You have no passage of who comes in and who's doing what. What you are is a basketball player, was a great player in her era. today. Be an average player. That's all Cheryl Swoops is, average player. Okay, she would not have dominated. None of the players that who are in the WA, whether you're coaching, assistant coach, whatever, you would not have been a dominant player in the WBA. It's just like Michael Jordan. Everybody says, oh, Michael would have been done. No, he wouldn't. Okay, because there was nobody jumping like John Morant. Okay, there was nobody jumping as high and playing the game the way they played it now. Nobody was shooting as well. So Michael Jordan would have to fit in there. Yeah, would he be a, probably the player of the league? Yes. Okay, but I don't think Cheryl Swoops would be, okay, because Cheryl Swoops is not that dominant when you play against the talent. Okay, Jordan was talented against whoever. The NBA, you are the best 400 in the world. Here's the deal that I don't like, and I've told you time and time again, that they, uh, the old regime preaches this is the best 144 players in the world. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not even close. You could take go to the Olympics and take a player off of each team, and I guarantee you this, Okay, there will be better than the players playing in the WNBA. So quit using the statement, okay, until you get to a global game that you have the best 104 players. You don't, okay? And that's why the, where the game is trying to get to, and I'm telling you, another 70 players from the college game that are playing at the top level will get you there. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We are just got you a little taste of unclick. And I'm telling you something here, Cheryl Swoops, okay? Average player today, great player in her day. Okay, no doubt about it. Okay, Angel Reese, outstanding basketball player, but also is an outstanding actress, is an outstanding entertainer. Okay, so he, she has a choice to make because she's not really a full-time basketball player. Angel Reese came to be a full-time basketball player. She would be just as good or right there with Caden Clark, but that's not her goal. And we have to understand that. And we have to respect that. Now, as far as Cheryl Roops, your time has come and gone. Okay, what you did was great. But the players weren't as talented. 
So guess what? It looks and you stand out better. If you played today, guess the average player. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. We are powered up by fanatics. All things are possible to those who believe, and we're going to call it like we see it. We don't sugarcoat it. And this is the old WNBA, and this Caitlin Clark, as you look at Caitlin Clark, this is the new WNBA. And the new WNBA is fantastic. We'll see you soon.